And even today, you know, Baba was reminding us, what's he say? Bring the fruit to Baba. You know, some trees produce a lot of fruit, others not so much. But bring the, the fruit to Baba. So the title of this evening, I think, you know, it's it's so appropriate for all of us. And I think sometimes we forget the role of service in our spiritual life. I mean, every day in Baba's Murli, he'll speak of the role of service. And also, I was remembering, I'm sure all of you have taken from Madhuban those books that have four different colors inside of them, you know? And the daddies used to keep their notebook with sections, four sections, and one was Gyan, Yog, Dharna, and Seva. So Baba speaks of all four subjects. And in our university, in our school, these are the four subjects that are important to us as Brahmins. And so Gyan, it's very, very important. And without Gyan, what can we do? We wouldn't even know who we were. We wouldn't even know who Baba is. We wouldn't know who each other is. And so always coming back to that awareness, the foundation of our life is Gyan, understanding and developing that awareness, which requires lifelong learning. Our learning doesn't stop, does it? It continues daily. And it gives us guidance for the self in relationship with others, inspirations for service, and how to connect with Baba. So Gyan is very, very important, and it's the number one subject. The second subject, of course, is yoga, which can only happen after we understand who we are, who Baba is. And that becomes the essence of our life, no? our relationship with Baba. And Baba tells us again and again, doesn't he? Each one of you will say, my Baba. I love Baba more than you love Baba. <laughs> because that's how we feel in our hearts. It's, it's my Baba. Hmm? We love Baba so deeply. And that love is the, the thread that keeps Baba tied to us and us tied to Baba. It's a thread of love. And also the energy, I think as Brahmins, we're very, very fortunate because at the end of the world, everyone's energy is going down so quickly, so much happening in the world. And yet for us Brahmins from Amrit Vela, what happens? We receive that energy, that love from Baba directly. <clears throat> And of course, the next subject in our university is dharna, the principles, the disciplines, the, the shrimat that Baba has given us that I then apply in my daily life. Baba has given us instructions, what time to wake up, <laughs> what time to go to sleep. We even have our traffic control song, Go to Sleep Princess, no? the 9.30 traffic control. And then we have the Wake Up song for our Amrit Vela. He gives us the, the task of coming to Murli every day to hear what Baba is asking of us for that day. He tells us what to eat. He tells us how to eat. <laughs> eat in remembrance of Baba. Don't remember anyone else. He even, I think, was it 
I think it was today, maybe, how many pairs of shoes do we need? <laughs> I think Baba said you only need one pair of shoes. <laughs> but I always remember Daddy Janky should always check how many pairs of shoes we used to have. Anyway, that's by the by. But he tell us how to dress, you know, how to live, how to interact with each other. So dharna, very, very important. And then service. After those three topics, we have service. And if gyan, yoga, and dharna is firmly in place in my Brahmin life, Yoga is a natural, sorry, service is a natural fruit of that. How often when you've maybe come out of Murli and you're going home and you meet people and they'll say, where have you been? You look so peaceful. Hmm? Or you're just sitting somewhere and people see you quite differently from how they see others around you. Service is already happening very quietly, very silently, because the application of gyan, yoga, and dharna in our lives becomes a tool for service to happen in a very natural way. Mm. I think sometimes we see service as giving talks I mean it is service you know doing the exhibitions we have to do this but that's something we do in a gathering with other people it's not so easy to cook, prepare the tolly organize the lecture get organize the flyers alone it can be done but it's much more fun to do it with the family but I think the first step on the path of service is the first three topics, Gyan, Yog, and Dharna. And then, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, a very simple step as well. Our centers are created by our presence. Okay, today many of us meet online. It's brought the global family together, so even the computer becomes a form of service. But I still feel in my heart, these are my words, for those of us who can be present in the center, it's very, very important. Because when souls are coming into Baba's house and they're seeing other smiling faces in the building, it gives them such confidence and encouragement that they're coming to a good place. And so that goes into my account of service. My presence in a gathering is also going into my account of service. Um, whatever I'm doing, my interactions, with others, how others see me, again, I can inspire, or not, but if I'm inspiring others, that is also in my account of service. So I don't think service has to be seen as the big topic of just doing, but a big part of service is being, being present, being accountable, being cooperative, being present at a time of need. I remember many murlis of Baba, of course, but Baba says very often to do something without being asked is much more powerful than waiting to be, please, can you do this? Please, can you do that? Hmm? To, to be present and available at a time of need. It's such a gift in the role of service and for my family. So, 
Yes, for me, I feel service is very, very simple. Um, and then we come into the bigger field of service when we're going out to organize exhibitions and different things. And I think, um, I'm going to risk saying this here, but I think all of us experience the the clash of sun scars at that time. No, <laughs> It's like um, when we come into the gathering and we have to make decisions, we have to do things together, perhaps in a short period of time, then we can see the the gyan, the yog, the dharna, how deep it is within us if I'm able to manage myself in the gathering. Again, it's the field of service is coming together with other people and still maintaining that spirituality of being God's God's child, no? I'm Baba's child. And that's what we have to reveal to the world. We have to bring the bouquets to Baba as Baba's children. So I feel once we step onto the field of service, it's like it takes a diamond to cut a diamond. And we're all diamonds different shapes, sizes, forms, but we're all diamonds and we're all very, very valuable in Baba's eyes. And you, as my family, are the ones who can help me to grow. <clears throat> it means, you know, I have to have Vian. Baba has forewarned me of everything every day in the Murli. The Mayas, uh, the illusions, the distractions. How, if my yoga is not connected with Baba, I start to become influenced by other things around me. If my dharna is not in place, then there's a feeling of weakness inside. So coming into the gathering with the family is an amazing platform for me to see myself perhaps as I really am when I'm sitting alone somewhere how long can I sit in yoga but when I come onto the field of service with the family okay it can be easy sometimes it can be not so easy but they are my true helpers on this spiritual path and my spiritual life to guide me forward, to help me practice everything that I hear from Baba every day. I can see it in reality. Am I able to be tolerant? Am I able to be patient? So for me, service is very much grassroots. We can say self-service is first. Because Gyan is such a, a precious and high energy commodity <laughs> um, that we are sharing with the world. And our words have to be very wise. I think one thing, I don't know how it is in your part of the world, but I know here in Belgium today, we have so many different groups now. And all of them are super efficient in social media. <laughs> all of them have amazing uh, venues, you know, shops and amazing buildings, retreat places. And they're all speaking spirituality in different ways and yet one thing that everyone appreciates about the Brahma Kumaris is our dharna 
You know, they say to us, you really wake up early in the morning? Do you really? Do you really study every day? And then when they meet us, they say, yeah, your vibrations, they're very peaceful. Again, the foundation of service is our lives. And when we speak Gyan, just think giving the course to students. If I'm just speaking words, Baba says, you know, like a, a parrot, <laughs> we all can learn everything um, by reading, by studying. But when I'm sitting in the company of Baba and we are welcoming a soul, a possible, well, someone from the Golden Silver Age, you know, even if they're extended family, they've come to Baba's home. And so they have come for a purpose. And what is my role at that time is to be Gyani, to be Yogi, to be one sitting in my accurate dharna and sharing the words Baba wants us to share with those souls. And also, so I feel, again, I'm repeating myself, but I do feel service has to be understood as a very, very important role, but not necessarily on out there, you know, running here, running there. It'll happen anyway, that's guaranteed. <laughs> that doesn't stop. But I think service has to start with the self and getting the, the four subjects in our lives in a good balance. There's also the other aspect Baba says about service. He says, use your man, tan, and dan. So your body, your mind, and your wealth. Hmm? So yes, using my body on the field of service, I do my karma yoga, I offer my service, whatever that may be. Uh, I offer my cooperation through my physical presence, my physical body. Sorry, that's, I'm talking about the body here. I should go back and maybe start with the mind because it's man first, isn't it? First, we have to start with the mind. And from Amrit Vela, what happens when you sit with Baba at Amrit Vela? I know for myself, at Amrit Vela, I don't know, I always feel inspired. You know, some clarity comes about what I should do that day. Maybe not every day, but quite a few days, you know, sitting in Baba's company. There's like a, a moment of, hmm, maybe I should do this this way. I'm thinking of service projects or don't forget to get in touch with. We're just thinking about International Yoga Day coming up soon. Here they're very slow in organizing and... Uh, We've been talking about it and it was just coming into my mind again. Do something. Don't just sit back and wait for something to happen. And also the service that's done through the mind. Um, Baba will tell us again, Aviyakta Murlis, Sakar Murlis. When you're going to meet a group of people, send light energy, send Sakash to those souls before you go. Create the atmosphere before you go. When I was in Scotland, I was working at the Chamber of Commerce and there had some tough people I was working with. And before I went to the office, I would always send rays of light to the office, to the people I was going to be working with all day, just sending them light energy, peace and love and happiness, whatever it may be. And I would always do this 
after Amrit Vela, I would consciously take 10 minutes to send this light energy. And I tell you, it made big changes in my life. I spent many years working there and it was such a beautiful experience. But I think we have to be attentive that we use our mind in the right way. Sunday's Aviyakt Murli. What did Baba speak about? The power of elevated thoughts, the power of silence. You know, the missing ingredient in science was silence. And so learning to use my mind, again, the basis, Gyan, Yog, Dharna, and then the service happens. How many of you have had the experience <clears throat> when you've been thinking about someone and they're either going to call you <laughs> or you're going to walk into them in the street and um, what happens? Oh, I was thinking about you. <laughs> it always works that way. Think about Madhuban. You need to meet someone. You can't find them. And what happens? They appear in front of you or you get a message. They want to meet you. Again, learning to use our mind in the right way. It's such a precious treasure that each one of us has. And it's one of the, the, the tools of spiritual service of my spiritual life and not to underestimate its power. Um, if you read some of the Aviyakt Murlis of the end times, Baba will also remind us as you come towards the end, all your administration will happen through the power of thought. Imagine, where's our surface then? World Meditation Hour, what do we do? Many of our videos, they're so beautiful. We're sitting above the world, sharing peace and light and love with the souls of the world. Man Seva, Man. And so this subject of service through the mind, it's part of the whole picture of service. Mm -hmm. Tan, we all contribute with our, our, our bodies, as I said earlier, being present. Um, karma yoga. Um, when I first came to Baba, I lived in Shakti Bhavan, which was on the floor above the center for the first three years of my Brahmin life. And of course, Wednesday, which is today, <laughs> it's Karma Yoga Day. And for me, that was quite a, um, an eye-opener, actually, to the depths of the importance of that. It was a learning for me in those early days. And that was physical service, no? And you could either do it with love or you could do it with resentment because maybe I hadn't done it properly and I was told, you must go back and do a little bit here. And so I was learning, yeah? to use my body with love in Baba's service, in Baba's home. And, um, and of course, yes, um, how many of you been around when our daddies used to visit us? Huh? We'd have many sleepless nights. And sometimes we would wonder, where's the energy coming from? And yet everything would happen as if by magic, hands would appear, uh, things would happen, because Brahmins coming together, offering their bodies hmm, in um, for service. Use me. I'm available. What do you need me to do? And really, uh, I appreciate these souls so much, because alone, I'm nothing. I can only do service when I have the support of the family. And I think the majority of Brahmins will agree with me there. Um, 
each one of us has a speciality. We might not see it, but Baba has spoken again in many more ways that he knows each one's speciality. And I think for each one of us, perhaps it's um, a gift to be able to recognize each one's speciality. Sometimes on the field of service, we have our own personal desires, but you know, if someone else can do it better and more efficiently than I can, isn't it better to ask them to do it? Hmm? I think that was part of my growing process because on the field of service, often the desire to, to do everything, to be part of everything is so, I think it comes from a very pure place that we want to uh, do everything for Baba, but really learning to see the specialities in others and also know our own specialities. And also I was thinking both man and tan, mind and body, whatever I do, it should be filled with love. It should be filled with good wishes and pure feelings. Because my presence in a room creates an atmosphere. Yeah? So... Whatever I'm thinking is going into the atmosphere. When we have talks or outside programs, what do we do as yogis? Usually a group of us will go and sit in the room and spread, spread Baba's vibrations. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. The majority of us will go and sit in the room even an hour before the talk, to set up the room, but also to spread vibrations into the atmosphere so that the room is filled with a very special energy when souls come in. So whenever I take up a service project, again, Gyan, Yog, Dharna, Seva, I keep going back to the four topics, the three before service, when they're in place in my life, then I can be a real service companion on the field of service. And then your life becomes service. You become a walking, talking lighthouse. <laughs> and wherever you go, excuse me, wherever you go, um, people will be pulling you. Come, <laughs> help me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sure this happens for all of you. So we don't have to run after service, but I think we do have to be constantly prepared for service. And that preparation is a daily task. And it starts from Amrit Vela, and it ends with our nighttime meditation. And if I am applying Baba's wisdom in my life, everything else falls into place. Even my wildest dreams become a reality. You know, things that you feel are impossible become possible. You find yourselves in situations where service is just happening. Hmm? And you wonder, how is this possible? Yeah, who's our companion, number one companion on the surface field? It's Baba. And he says, make me your companion. I'm present with you on the field of service. And he needs us as much as I need Baba. Baba needs each and every one of us. Because, and also, what does Baba tell us? I am Karan Karavanhar. You know, I'm Karanhar, the one who does. So he plays the role of Karan Karavanhar. He gets things done through his instruments, his children. 
<clears throat> so I remember one time actually, it's just something for you to think about. <clears throat> I was sitting with a group of old Brahmins. Each one of us, we feel we're Baba's instruments in different ways. And um, there were some new souls, uh, contact souls actually, who were in the class as well. And Daddy said, Baba's ver Daddy's very happy to see the instruments on the front row. So we sort of looked at each other and thought, oh, we're no longer the instruments. <laughs> and then Daddy said, on the back row is the power. And I really understood at that time that, you know, even if souls are not 100% following our principles, our disciplines and everything else. But they become instruments in Baba's service in a different way. And I think we have to keep our three eyes open and be very aware that service is not black and white. As a Brahmin, my service starts with me. Yan <coughs> Yog Dharna Seva. Souls come in contact with us who can serve many, many more than we will ever be able to touch. They too become instruments in allowing Baba's service to take place in many different ways. Again, I'm sure you've seen that. And lastly, uh, Dan, you know, my wealth. Whatever I have, what do we do? We eat. We sleep, <laughs> we wear clothes, we go to Madhuban, we contribute to allow little programs to keep our Zoom going. Uh, there's always something that we can do in a worthwhile way. But whatever I am doing on the field of service, remember what goes out comes back. And so the quality of what I'm doing has to start from deep within, from that place of love, from that place of understanding and remembering who's my companion on this field. It's Baba himself. I'm looking out for my, my family members, perhaps, who've got a little bit lost and I'm offering the door back into the family for them. Oh, it's uh, many souls out there are still to be found mm. and we have to do that quickly. I think um, my time's about up, is it? We are going at nine o'clock. We are finishing. Okay, okay. So I feel that the role of service for us in our spiritual life is fundamental. It's integral. <laughs> it is part of our life. Um, I don't think we exist without service, whether it's big service or little service. I can contribute in any way at any time. And when we see the family, just think when you go to Madhuban, isn't it lovely to see all the family together? Most of us, you know, we don't meet physically very often. But you can see this and the energy of Madhuban. It sustains us for the year. And when you see the, how these souls come and do service in Madhuban, no? they offer everything they have to provide everything for us. And then we come back to our centers re-energized and ready to do whatever it is that comes in front of us. I don't have a very good planning intellect. Many of my brothers and sisters have a much better planning intellect than I do. Uh, I'm more of a, yeah, I'm happy to do anything, but organized organization is not my speciality. And so I'm very grateful for my brothers and sisters who keep me organized, no? Because a service plan is such a fantastic tool. It keeps us focused. It keeps us moving towards a goal. 
but not to lose sight of my own service plan. Was it Bob said we have to become karmatit? Well, and we today he was saying you have to become karmatit. And so part of that story is my life walking along the path, the surface field with all of you, <laughs> because this is where our sanskaras can emerge. <clears throat> this is where I can see what else it is I have to change. And so, yes, the surface field is an amazing, it has an amazing role in my life. And I'm, I would never step back from it. Sometimes <clears throat> we get the feeling, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> Let me have a... Uh, a weekend of just doing tapasya. But in reality, the heart says, I'm going to do a weekend of tapasya. Maybe we spend the morning um, doing tapasya, remembering Baba. Then we get hungry, we go and eat. And as we're going to eat, we'll pick up something, maybe read something, and or someone phones us. So the reality of that intense yoga it's not so surreal. So but one thing I'll tell you, <clears throat> um, this year we had a silent retreat in Delhi. Well, we have one every year in Delhi. And that's one of my um, surface roles. I have a, a role on that team. And this year we decided to do something completely different. And it was because Asha Didi in ORC in Delhi told us that you just entertain yourselves on a silent retreat. We have Murli, we have class, we have um, workbooks, journaling. You know, we have so many different things. And she reminded us that <clears throat> Baba would put the sisters in a room and tell them to stay there for so many days food would be brought to them and they didn't write, they didn't do anything and he would give them a topic to reflect on throughout the day, use the mind in service. So we decided this year that um, we would come together for eight hours collective yoga. We would surrender our telephones, we would surrender our mobile phones, uh, computers, anything that would connect us. For the four days we were together, the dining room, we had simple food. That wasn't so easy for Delhi because they love to feed us, <laughs> but they did respect us for what we wanted to achieve. <clears throat> and each one of us during that retreat really felt Baba's presence in that program, it was as if Baba became the facilitator. And it was something I'll never forget. And that's why I emphasize the role of service is only one facet of this Brahmin life. And service happens through your life. Service happens because you exist. Service happens naturally in ways that none of us can explain or, uh, you know, give meaning to. It happens. And I think Baba, in his magical way, is using each and every child and the more I can keep my mind still, the more Baba can use me in the way he wants to use me. So for me, that is the role I feel service has in our spiritual life. So I think I was told to stop after 45 minutes and open up for any questions, 
not that I can answer them, but uh, any questions or any thoughts that you might like to share? Please uh, write to chat box and I will share them with you. Mm. But at mm. the moment, there is none. Okay, okay. Yeah. So service helps us, isn't it? We think we serve uh, around us or any anyone in the world we can serve, but service is helps us uh, to evaluate ourselves. Service is that tool that allows us to to grow, no. <clears throat> but I think, you know, sometimes we become a bit, little bit like a business. And uh, <laughs> we, we, of course, you know, in each of our countries, uh, I don't know where you are, but we have to have our board. We are registered. So there's the organization, which has its, its surface front. Um, the other day we had a meeting with the new ambassador, Indian ambassador. And of course, it's like you present your credentials. This is the service we do in this country. And so, yes, um, although I'm not such an organized person, I do feel that the Brahma Kumaris is the shop front for Baba. And we have to promote our organization. But an organization is only as valuable as the people who are part of that organization. So yes, we have our boards, we have our legal requirements, which is also service. We have our, um, I'm sure you have your service teams in the centers. Oh, dif different people who are interested in doing different things that allows everything to come together. And yes, definitely, it's allowing us to grow. So it's important. Sure. So, uh, Brother Michael asked a question. <laughs> <clears throat> Does service is a mirror of something about me? Sorry, could you repeat that? Thus, service is a mirror of something about me. Perhaps, perhaps. Um, <clears throat> you know, today Baba was saying some children produce a lot of fruit. Other children don't produce so much fruit. Maybe it's they have some defect or not. But I also... Uh, there'll be other murlis that come up and Baba will take a different angle and he'll remind us that <clears throat> sorry, let me just drink something he'll remind us that some places the the land is very, very hard and it takes a lot of preparation it takes a lot of uh, um, you know, digging the land, it takes a lot of preparation before you plant the seeds. And over the years, many seeds are planted. Some fruits grow quickly, other fruits grow slowly. But I think going back to Gyan, Yog, Dharna and Seva, service can only be good, can't it? If I have those four pillars of Raja Yoga in my life. And I think if I'm measuring service or the my, my role, I don't know how to put it, role is a funny word, but the service that I'm doing being a reflection of me, um, I think I, I would give up. I mean, I'm in a country where service is not so easy. 
Um, you know, it's very slow. We have a lot of lot of contacts, high level contacts, but service service is slow. And if I were to sit back and say, "Well, Catherine, you're doing nothing," I would lose my, I'd lose myself. No, but because I know my foundation is solid, then service will always continue. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I've answered that or not, but um... this brother has another question. <laughs> <laughs> How much can you recognize Baba's help as you do service? Baba Karan Karavanhar, he said. Mm. You know, I I see it all the time. Um, sometimes <clears throat> on the field of service, there can be meetings you have. To... <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes there can be outside meetings that we have to participate in. Um, and they can happen maybe one after another. And it would be so easy to say, oh, I'll just miss this one. Or, okay, I don't need to take Tully with me for that one. Maybe I can use the Tully <laughs> that I have. And But sometimes there's a deep feeling that comes within that's almost saying to me, Catherine, no. Be prepared. You never know what's going to happen. You must go. And by going, something else, another door opens. A good connection is made. Um, just by letting go of my perhaps lazy nature sometimes or feeling I'm doing, <laughs> which can happen. Um, I see... And sometimes doing things that I personally am not so interested in sometimes. Um, I was just thinking um, in June, we have the Sustainable Energy Week here in, in Brussels. And Sister Annette from Poland will come. And we're going to be participating. Not We haven't received a platform, but we decided we would be present during the three-day conference <laughs> and I just think to myself oh you know being present at these conferences sometimes you're just listening 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 but I know at coffee breaks and um, you know the breakout groups and different sessions that we participate in very good connections are made with people and we can always leave Baba's cards on the the tables in different places. And so, again, I think uh, sometimes it might not be my choice of service, but I know it's, it's important to be present. Again, this thing of offering myself to be present and seeing what's going to happen. Do you have special experiences? Do I have special experiences in service? <laughs> yeah, I remember many, many, many years ago, um, I was in Aberdeen in the north of Scotland. And when I was in Edinburgh as well, Daddy was on one of her tours. And we had this huge ballroom, huge ballroom. And um, I was driving back, you know how it is, you're setting up the room, you're making sure everything's in place, you haven't forgotten everything. And it was getting quite near the time and there was only half the room filled. And I got back in the car, the center wasn't too far away and I was driving back the car, I thought, okay, Baba, I've done everything I can do now, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there's nothing I can do, I just have to let go. And inside there was the feeling that, what did I not do? You know, I was seeing it as a reflection because the room was only half full. And when I came back, the room was filled, absolutely full. And I just sat back and I smiled and I laughed and I thought, the ego of I, no, I am doing. 
<laughs> I mean, when you have someone like Daddy, just her presence, her energy, um, things happen unexpectedly. But well, I could feel my heart sinking a little bit, you know, thinking, well, maybe nobody's going to come. But no, it was full. Yeah. And that's happened on many occasions, you know. But there's still that, perhaps it's a sense of responsibility rather than too much I, but um, I think it can, it can be a challenge. We're not perfect, none of us. We have to learn, all of us. Of and, um, and I think sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes you find yourself on a platform when you think, what am I doing here? I know nothing about this topic. <laughs> I know nothing. And again, Baba is Karan Karavan Har. Somehow he manages to allow you to share the right words at the right time in the right way. And that truly is Baba's role, Baba's hand in our hand, wherever we go, if, again, the four topics <laughs> are in place daily. Yeah. Thank you. And one sister wrote, as I understand, service not only make us grow, but also make uh, the others that we give service grow. Also major, she said. Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, this Baba tells us again and again, you first, no? you first. And I'm sure all of you have participated in teacher's training and everything. And once we've done that teacher's training, we're very enthusiastic. No? When we get our first student or a group of students, it's so intoxicating. And there's such a feeling of fulfillment inside. But yes, of course, you know, um, to give others an opportunity, understand where they are at, not to pressure anyone. Uh, I think that's something I've learned over the years. Uh, people uh, sometimes think they want to do service, <laughs> but when they understand what it really means, they sometimes step back. That's okay. Everyone can find a role. But definitely find opportunities, find out what people want to do. Sometimes it's good to, to really see people want to offer something. So let them offer something, however small that may be. You know, somebody might like to do flowers for Baba, even bring in one rose for Bog. It's, it's a beautiful service. Yeah, just encourage and help others with our love and what we have taken from service because this is what's allowing us to grow and of course others will grow as well mm.